Welcome to the wood turning workshop. You know, there's a kid in all of us, and some of us <laughs> never grow up. And that's why this ball and cup toy and this ink pen are great for today's show. Not because they're good gifts to give to children, but because they're the perfect project to use to teach a kid how to turn. And we're gonna visit with Bonnie Klein here in a minute, and she's gonna explain to us why that's so important. Stay tuned. The Wood Turning Workshop is made possible in part by Woodcraft, since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Easy Wood Tools, offering a full line of wood turning tools with replaceable carbide cutters. Tell me a little bit about what's going on here. Oh, this is uh, a very exciting event. This is the fifth year we've done this program. We have 25 lathes going all at the same time. The kids are allowed to come free to the symposiums and they can sign up for classes throughout the three days. And we have quite a few different instructors teaching different projects. Most of these kids in here will have four or five sessions in here. Why is it important to get the kids started turning? Well, if you look at the at our membership, the majority of our membership has gray hair and over 65. <laughs> so uh, we are targeting the youth as the future of our wood turning right. field. And when you're teaching a child, you have to think about things that you don't normally think about. So you have some projects you design that we can use in the shop? Yes. Uh, kids like a project that they have something they can play with, and it's a toy, something fun. Um, something that is um, sort of success oriented. Yeah. It's something that, well, like for instance, a spinning top, it's hard to make an ugly one. Right. Okay. So uh, these projects have been di designed for, for kid level type things and good skill building projects as well. Bonnie Klein is great and she has more energy than most of those kids in that room. Most of them, not all of them. Okay, this is where as a turner, you're going to have to remember what you forgot. In other words, there are so many things you already take for granted now that you're going to have to think back as to when you started turning, what you had to do and what made you think, oh gosh, I'll never be able to do this. Now, the first thing we do have to keep in consideration is, you know, a good lathe, it's about at your elbow height, you know, the spindle center right here, just like that. So, we're going to have little ones down here. So, we have to get them up a little bit higher. You want to build a platform. So I'm on a mat right now, which is just for softness, but you're going to have to bring this up six inches or more to get the child up to the right height. Don't get them too high because it'll tend to get them to start scraping rather than cutting. Also, there's a lot to learn about the lathe. You don't want to overwhelm them with too much information. Just let them know this has the motor. It spins the stuff. This is the tailstock and it holds the stuff on. Pretty simple. Now, we want to get them going on turning. You've got to think of safety. First thing is, no long sleeves. I really don't want a child wearing a long sleeve because they have to pay attention to it and it could come down if they don't roll it up right. So, short sleeves for sure. The other thing is, you want them to wear a full face shield. And you want them to wear this for quite a while until they get comfortable because if you remember your early days turning, <laughs> I remember mine, <laughs> I needed a full face shield for about a year and a half. So anyway, okay, we're up to the lathe. You want to talk to them about stance and position because a lot of kids will come up and they'll be just like this and they have their feet together and they're going to fall apart. Well, if their feet are together like this, they're not going to be able to move. So have them take a comfortable stance about shoulder width and tell them they want to be able to shift their weight and not feel like they're getting off balance. They won't understand why, but have them do it. Now, we come up here, we're going to show them that this is a tool rest and here is a piece of wood. And for all of you out there, this is a nine inch by two inch square piece of hard maple. And we're going to be making a ball and cup toy out of that, which is a great project to make for a child because they can have a lot of fun with it. It's very simple. And as adults, we'll go ahead and turn the ball because that's more complicated. And we'll let the child do a little bit of hollowing with a scraper and turn the cup part. And then they can have hours of pleasure. Hours of, Never mind. The tools today, we're going to keep it simple. A roughing gouge, 
a spindle gouge, a round nose scraper, and a parting tool. So, we want to round this out. Okay, make sure they have on their face shield. And you explain to them that all tools are sharp. You don't want to touch this end because, as we all know, they are sharp and you'll cut yourself very quickly. Show them how with the tool rest up here, you want to turn the lathe by hand to make sure the wood doesn't hit the tool rest. Now, we're going really basic here, but that's super important because they don't know anything about turning. The other thing is we're going to bring the speed of the lathe down really, really low, like that, and then bring it up slowly. To rough out for a new turner, we only want this to be about 500 RPM. The idea is not to quickly remove the wood. The idea is to learn about technique. Now, here's a very important thing. You set the tool rest up for them at the proper height. You're going to start overloading them if you explain everything to them, but we do have it a little bit below center, and it's out away from the wood. Now, have them put the edge of the tool on here with the handle down so the tip is facing up. So when they slide this up, it bumps. It does not cut. Okay? You can hold their hands to do this first cut. And then tip the handle up, and when it starts to cut, move to the side. Down, back, up, to the side. You don't want them going any faster than this. You want them to do this slowly because they're learning how it feels to have the tool touch the wood. If you have a child who's a little skittish, a little scared, you can go ahead and rough out the wood until you have a perfect cylinder. Now remember, this is where stance is really important again. If the kids have their feet wide like this, then they can do the dance. You lean back and you have the tool up here against the wood and then you simply shift your body. You can see how the handle is into my side and I have my hands up here. Remember, you're telling them everything. Keep the tool into your side, have your hand grasping the tool and use your fingers as backstop up here. So don't have a death grip on the tool, but you're simply pinching it lightly amongst your fingers, amongst your fingers, between your fingers, and you slide. So one of the mistakes that kids will make a lot is they come up here and try to scrape everything. Have the handle down, see how it raises the tool, the bevel rides, and it's just a slide across. Okay, we have our cylinder rounded out. This is where, as the adult, I think you should take over for a moment. And I have another tool somewhere. There it is. <laughs> okay, we're going to take our regular grind spindle gouge, and we're going to cut the ball out for the uh, ball and cup here. Now, I want to see what my diameter is right now. So we'll just take some calipers here and hold it up here. So we're about one and three quarter inches. We probably want to make the ball somewhere about one inch in width because they're new. They're not going to make the walls very thin on the cup part. So this will give them a little bit of room to play with. Now you can let the child help on this part. We're going to take our parting tool. It's got stuff laying everywhere today. And uh, also I need a pencil. There we go. And since this is going to be one inch wide, we're going to just kind of make some parts right in here like that. And this is just rough marking, so I kind of know where the circle is going to go. Now, this is a cool thing. Kids love this. Have them hold the pencil up here, turn the lathe on, turn the lathe off. It's such a neat trick that we take for granted, but this has got wow factor to it. <laughs> and you can even see that line there, so we're going to mark that. Now, we'll take our parting tool. You can have the child come to the edge here. And the reason we made the line here is because this point is sticking into the wood a little bit, right? Now, remember, with the parting tool, on this cut, we're fine. You don't have to make a relief cut. But, you know, show them. The bevel goes up. You start raising the handle. Don't come down like this and scrape. You get little chunks like that. If you come up here, you get longer chips. And let the bevel ride down. Now, right now, I'm just parting this away to the edge of our ball. Now, we're going to come out to here. This is the center. We want to bring this down an inch. And remember, stop after you go in about an eighth of an inch, come out to the side, and make a relief cut. You have to explain to them that the tool will get caught in between the wood if you don't do this. So you can have them keep parting down like this. You can hold your little calipers in and say, keep going, keep going. There we go. We have an inch. So you taught them how to do that. Now we come over here, and we just have them go ahead and part it down to an inch all the way. And we're still going at about 500 RPM. We're in no hurry. A little bit of wood stopped the cut there. Once they've done that, 
They've got practice in at a parting tool. We want to stop the lathe and we actually want to switch out tool rests real quick and go to a little six inch one here because we need to get in closer here. So I'll bring this in about like so and we're getting closer to the work. And you can explain to them about that. You don't want the tool rest too far away from the work or you'll get a catch or something like that. So got that locked down. We've got this at the right height, start making our curve. So as the adult, you'll start making the ball. A lot of us adults can't even make balls. So, and they're also called spheres. Um, but it's like sneaking up on a bead. A ball is one big bead. Now as an adult, I'm gonna pick the speed up. And you can do that for the child too because as you get into the smaller diameter, you have fewer feet per second moving, right? So you have to pick the speed up to be able to make a good cut. We just don't want to scare them with speed right off the top, so keep it as slow as you can while you're doing everything. And you can see as I'm making the turn, i am got the tool in my hand. It's kind of a body rotation movement for me. So I've got the tool, I'm leaning to the left, I'm raising the handle, I'm also turning the tool, and I swing my body this way to keep going around the corner. Now, the kid can watch this whole process and they're gonna learn from this because they're gonna make some beads here in a minute and they're gonna need to know how to do this technique. So we're down to an inch right here on this ball. So we're gonna clear out the wood right here. And we're going to part this off. There we go. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Well, it'd be nice if it was, but you know how it goes. <laughs> okay, once this gets loose from here, we'll actually take the tool, the tool rest, the tail stock, pull it back, and we'll just nip that little bit off right there. And I can do it like this, there we go. See, it just popped off, and just clean up the end right there. Now, while we're here, I'm gonna take my parting tool and come in and make a very small dimple right there because we're gonna have to drill a hole. Okay, now I have a 5 30 seconds bit. Depends on the size of the string you're going to use, so you don't have to follow my instructions. Turn this down to drilling speed. You probably want to do this one yourself. Anyway, we're going to just take this up here and push this right through. We want to go all the way to the bottom, all the way through the bottom of the sphere ear. There we go. So, once I drill this all the way through, then I'll go ahead and part the ball off and we'll be ready to move on to the next step. But right now, it's time for your turn. Well, so far, we've been talking about the mechanics of teaching a child how to turn, not the mental parts. <laughs> Children do think differently than adults, at least most of them. One thing for certain, remember, children have very short attention span. Ooh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, kids, obviously, they want instant gratification. They don't want to wait for anything. <laughs> and also, make sure <laughs> that they have fun doing what they're doing, even though it might be a bit challenging, that they feel like they've achieved something. They feel good about themselves. But remember, children think they're invincible, that they can do anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> make sure they understand that the tools are sharp, that they could hurt themselves, to respect wood turning, but to enjoy it. <laughs> Didn't think I could do it, did you? <laughs> okay, I went ahead and drilled a hole in our blank that goes a little bit deeper than the ball. So that way, see the line, that's how deep we are. That way the ball will fall into the cup and stay inside. Now, I marked a line to where the bottom is. All we want to do right now is we're just gonna make the shape down to here and clear out a little bit for the handle because we're gonna start hollowing and we need to leave the extra wood there so it doesn't get weak and break off. So we're gonna start with our spindle gouge. And again, you know, now we're gonna be making a big bead. They haven't made that before. So I'm gonna turn the speed down a little bit, but I still want to speed up a bit because when you're using a small tool like this, you're gonna need a little bit of speed. So have them start with the stance again, tool in their hand. So you got your feet nice and relaxed. I can switch back and forth. The tool is up against my side of my hip and I'm again using my fingers right here. 
Now one thing that will happen is if you put the tool on here, it'll skate on you if you don't tell them to use this finger to pinch it and keep it from skating. So you come here, you raise the handle and turn the tool. It's a bead, you don't do a lot at once. You have to come back now, remember, teach them to do this, you have to clear out the excess wood. So here we go, we turn, we lift, we turn, we lift. You can even have them push straight in, use the thumb as a backer and do it like this. And then they can remove a lot of wood quickly. So we'll get that knocked down really quick, come back here. Now we're gonna start making our curve. And if it's not perfect, don't worry about it. Also, these projects are meant to not be sanded. So we're not gonna do any sanding today because we want to teach them how much fun turning is. We can get to sanding later. And that looks pretty good. We're not going for anything fancy. So now I'm gonna switch over and move the tool rest and we'll start hollowing. Okay, we're gonna take our round nose scraper here. And on this again, stance is important, but it's a little bit different. You put one foot back here and one foot here. If you have a long bed lathe, of course you're gonna stand here and lean over. That's why I like a short bed. It's a little bit easier on my back. <laughs> and as we get older, that's important. Okay, tool rest is here and it's set to the height to where the tool is just right at center. Now remember, as the child starts to turn, make sure they keep their hands behind the tool rest, not in front. You can get cut or you can get pinched. So we'll turn this on. And I've already drilled the hole, so that helps us so we don't have to worry about the center. But anyway, tell them to arc and swing the handle. And just take a little bit at a time, and they don't have to go very deep. So we'll start here, arc and swing. And we just need it wide enough to let that one inch ball in there. If they're making it for themselves, make it one inch and one eighth. If they're making it for you, make it as wide as possible. <laughs> but anyway, it's just a very gentle movement. And we're only gonna go down in here about an inch and a half, maybe, maybe an inch and quarter. And that's good because any deeper than that takes a little different skill set. For a beginner, it's a little bit too deep. Anyway, I'll hollow this out and then we'll move on to the handle. <laughs> what, he turned the handle already, yeah. And what I'm doing is drilling the hole right now for the string to go through. But don't worry about the handle because our next project is spindle turning also. And I figured it'd be easier to show you spindle turning techniques on that. <laughs> so let me show you how to part this off though because that's one important thing. Now, either way you wanna do this, you can do this yourself or you can have your protege do this. But one thing that's important, do not grab it like this to part it off for the student. You have a sharp tool. If they push too hard, wham, they go right into their hand. Not a good thing. So I want to come over here. And if I can reach around Brian, <laughs> we'll see how much I can do this. You kind of want to come in like this and hold the hand like that to part it off. So it's a little bit safer. It's out of the way. Excuse me. I'm doing this one-handed here. There we go. Okay. So anyway, come in and you can part it off like that. And there you go, nice and safe. Now I'm just prepping our blank for our next project, which is an ink pen. So this is seven and a half inches long and one inch square. Now one cool little trick, we're gonna use this a little bit later on, I'll show you uh, what it's for. But we wanna take this and put it on a jig that holds the wood at a 45 degree angle. Come up here, make sure the wood extends beyond that aluminum, and we're just going to score the wood lightly, bring it here, and all we're doing is making an X. But first, the big thing is we have to drill a hole that's going to receive the ink pen. So we're going to bring this up, put it in our chuck, and tighten down on the square stock. And jaws are really good for this, they will do that. I'm going to use my to my uh, tail stock here. I've got a Jacob's chuck with a drill bit in there and I'm just gonna make sure that I'm on the center. I just wanna see that it's centered. So when I tighten this up, it doesn't go off center. So that's nice and tight. And why are we drilling a hole? Because we are working with disposable ink pen refills. Uh, and we're gonna drill a hole that this will uh, just go into. Let me show you right here. And it jam fits inside of the pen you're gonna make. It's really cool, it holds it fairly tight, but you can still pull it out with a pair of pliers and change it. And this is gonna be a project that your child or your grandchild will keep for a lifetime, probably, because it's gonna be their first turning. They're gonna be so excited about it. Gonna turn the lathe down a little bit. 
This is all stuff that you should do in advance of this project. We're going to drill a 5 seconds inch wide hole in here. And I'm using a short bit right now because I want to make sure the hole is going fairly straight. If you use a long bit right off the top, a little smoky there, <laughs> make sure you clear your chips. Uh, it will wander and the bit could go crooked and go outside of the blank. So, okay, now we've got that drilled. I'm just going to take this and change it out with a longer 5 30 seconds inch bit. Slide this back. The Jacobs chucks are really handy to have. Now make sure that you drill your hole a little bit longer, a little bit deeper than the pin. So we want to go in at least this deep so you have a little bit more wiggle room because if you wind up having to cut the tip off a little bit, it'll be too short for that to go inside. We want to put this inside. We're going to turn the lathe on with it inside and start cutting. And once I get this drilled out, then I'm going to show you how we're going to do the spindle turning. Okay, now I've gone ahead and rounded this out because you already know how to teach a child how to rough out. Remember those X's I put in the back? It's just a cool little trick that when you take your four prong drive center, it gives it a place to get tooth on there. The, the blades go in there and hold really easily so you don't have to really drive this in with a mallet. Now down here, if you notice, I went ahead and rounded the end off and it fits. Hey Hagen, you don't get any air time today. Um, <laughs> I rounded this off so this fits into that cup right there and it protects it so we don't mess up the tip of the, t of the pin. We don't want the children turning that because you'd have to have it in the chuck and be hanging off. A little bit more advanced technique. So now we just want to start making beads and coves. So remember, to make a bead, you sneak up on the bead. You got your stance, you got your feet where you want to be, you got the handle by your side, you have the tool facing up. You have it on the tool rest. That's very important. Make sure they touch the tool to the tool rest first. That's one of the biggest mistakes you'll see. Bring it in, raise it, you start to cut, you roll the tool. Roll the tool. Once you start getting that position of the tool figured out, you can tell the child that they don't have to make it such a big exaggerated movement because they already know how to do it. So we're just going to put some shapes into here. And beads and coves are the nicest thing to teach them because you're using the spindle gouge and they're going to have a lot of fun with it. Now the other thing to remember too is that bit when we drilled the hole probably wandered off center a little bit. And it will be, uh, if you go too thin, you're going to wind up with a hole in your pin and that won't be a lot of fun. Because they're probably going to want to keep this one, like I said, for a lifetime. Now we're just making a simple bead here. It'd probably be kind of hard to hang on to, actually, if you think about that. Uh, what I might do is take that down a little bit. We'll make another shape. Design modification. So you make a cove now by sweeping your body. You bring the tool in at an angle, and you sweep your body, and you roll the tool. So it's almost a scooping motion, and it's very easy to make. You just roll and scoop. Make sure too. now you don't want to confuse them too much by talking uphill, downhill, but make sure that they learn to cut from high to low to go with the grain. And you can explain all that to them later. You don't want to fill their head with too much stuff. I know when I do it to myself, I get a headache. So imagine what it's like if you're 10 years old and you're trying to do this. So let's bring this down a little bit more. You can teach them how to push in and use it to clear out wood, like so. So now, why don't we try making a cut, just like that. You can actually teach them to use their fingers as a backstop again, hold that, and push in and make a nice, clean cut like that. So let's make a bead here. We'll make a bead by sneaking up on it, like we say. There we go. Now, any design, any shape you want is fine. You can use any of the tools that you want to show them how to use. Just make sure you show them the proper use and the proper way of holding it and presenting it. So I'm going to keep on turning down our pin here, and then I'll show you a really fun trick to do to it. Color. Every kid loves color, so that's what we're going to add to it. Just find yourself some pins that have a nice fat tip, and you can add color to the piece. You want to cover it with some polyurethane afterwards or a little bit of wax so the ink will come off in the kid's hands. But there we go. We have two great projects that you can use to teach children how to turn. And I really think they're going to be a lot of fun, and these kids will value these toys for a long time. Well, until the next time on the Wood Turning Workshop, keep turning. <laughs> I can't believe I did it again.
<laughs> Not bad. <laughs> oh, well, that figures. Next time on the Wood Turning Workshop. This is a ladle, and it's actually made of one piece of wood. Come out and I get a clearing cut, so I have a little room for the tool. And see, now we're really close. We're just right about on it. You're cutting air, so you don't want to be too aggressive here. Okay, that's in there nice and strong. We're ready for our next step. And it's a push cut, actually, with this, which is nice because by pushing, I'm actually pushing in to the jam chuck. You like some of that? Hey, you like my cooking, finally. <laughs> for more information about the wood turning workshop, visit our website at rsupublictv.org. <laughs> Teaching a child how to turn. But well, we also have to... <laughs> okay. Open it. You got it. You can do it. Well, so far, we've been talking about the physical... Ah, sorry, sorry. You can do it. <laughs> it's hard to keep them on, focused on... Ah, I timed it wrong. I'm glad I don't have ditches. Do I have purple on my face? Yeah. No. <laughs> Woo! Well, let's not do it too many times. Yeah, okay. You might get sick. The Wood Turning Workshop is made possible in part by... Woodcraft. Since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Easy Wood Tools, offering a full line of wood turning tools with replaceable carbide cutters. To order a DVD of this or any other episode, call 1 800 823 7210 or visit rsupublictv.org. This week on the Wood Turning Workshop, I'm going to teach you how to teach your kids to turn these toys. Make sure they touch the tool to the tool rest first. That's one of the biggest mistakes you'll see. Find yourself some pins that have a nice fat tip. And you can add color to the piece. Ah! Whoa! <laughs> it's a deadly toy. 